أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله على آله وصحبه ومن تبعه ولا سلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد All praises due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, Very happy to be uh, here with you tonight uh, for, for me this is a special uh, occasion for many reasons <clears throat> um, I'm not going to share all the reasons, but <laughs> I'll share a couple of them only. Uh, one, because Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, this is this time of my life it marks achieving a, not only one goal, but achieving the highest goals I have ever planned or put for myself. Alhamdulillah. So this is praising Allah. That's why it's special for that reason. Also, it is special because uh, it, it has a life experience for myself. And above all, it's special because it, it takes a long time and effort and lots of courage to talk about uh, something that normally there's a taboo about it or a stereotype about it or uh, an issue. Like people, you know, uh, consider it an issue which is the talaq, يعني, the, the divorce. So this is part of the deal. This journey, it is not normally um, something like nice and you are traveling business class and <laughs> at all times. It may be the, the, the way. And you may also be traveling first class or business class, but you have a bad treatment at the airport, right? Yeah, or, the, or you miss the flight. Or does, you know, having the ticket for first class or doesn't mean anything. And being there it does not guarantee you a good experience. Right? You can get sick. Yeah? Uh, having a very nice meal does not guarantee that you are not going to have a stomach ache. So there are many things. And sometimes also the opposite. Yani, traveling in, 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 in a harsh condition or the, by driving or you know, an economy class does not mean that you're going to have a bad experience. Uh, so that's why also this is very special because it, 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 uh, you know, we look to the end, we look to the other side that what I learned and what I um, uh, came up uh, with and what I achieved, this is what I want to share with my jama'ah, my community. You know? So this is why it's very special. As I always say about important topics, what this lecture is not. First, I have to talk about what this lecture is not. Because, you know, we all have expectations, right? So let me tell you what it is not, so we, we get it out of the way. So we all focused, inshallah, and we use our time efficiently because time is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time is ni'mah from Allah azza wa jal. So it is not to describe or get into real personal things. It's not to mention names or play finger pointing. And uh, it is not to demonize anybody, and it is not to put anybody on a pedestal either. Because normally on... Uh, dispute happens or uh, dissolution of marriage happens, one person is demonized and the other person put themselves on a pedestal, you know, like, like I'm the angel and the other one is the demon, you know, <laughs> this is not the case here. So this is not what we are here for. We are here for uh, uh, a few other things. It's to inspire, to inspire that, uh, yani when people say sky is the limit, no. Our limit is to please Allah Azza wa Jal, who is above the seven heavens. Okay? So our limit is what Allah said, halal or haram. So the limit can be two steps away, not the sky. And your limit can be right here. <laughs> and other affairs sometimes above the seven heavens, and Allah Azza wa Jal. So our limitation, it is not sky the limit or not the limit. يعني. What if my dreams are above the sky? There is a limit, you know, sky is the limit, limits me. I want tasheeh uh, for that, you know, the observation for this. Our limitation is the limitation of Rabbul Alami. Our limitation is what Allah says. Allah says, don't move one step. So I am limited. Even my dreams are beyond that step. 
Are we clear on this one? So don't, don't ever say, oh, always the sky, you can do anything. No, you cannot do anything. Can you create a fly? You can. Can you heal yourself? You can. Can you not get sick? You can. So you cannot do anything. So those who tell you, oh, you can do anything you want, they're lying to you. It's exaggeration, that's fine. It's, it's, that's okay. I and mean, when you mean like you can do anything in your capacity as a human being, mashallah, ma fi mushkila. Hayakallah. Yani any human being can do this within human capacity, even if nobody did it before. Bismillah, go ahead, try. But what is the limitation? If it is haram or halal. Bas. Right? So if it, you are allowed, ya akhi, achieve as much as you can in ilmu knowledge. Achieve. Money, achieve as much as you can in money. Achieve as much as you can in, 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 in material things. Is it halal or haram? Oh, that question. Halal or haram? Halal. Is haram? No, I cannot even take one step. I'm limited. So my job here today, I hope, inshallah, we get inspired. So I want you to have that intention. Every word that I'm going to say or every sentence I'm going to say will have a lesson. So this is very important. And I, will, I will take things like in chronological order. Sometimes I'll go back and present and then you know do, do this, these things but what I want you to focus on not the information but I want you to focus on the lesson when I underline something when I highlight it I tell you this is something I found that is good so you may try it I found that this was challenging and everything so I'm giving you the experience to avoid it hmm? so that's what we are here for inshallah and to be inspired especially our youth and my children and my nephews and my nieces and all my uh, you know, students, I want them to be inspired as well that you can achieve more than you thought that you can achieve. Okay? And there is uh, time to do that, even you think that you don't have time. I'm here also to analyze certain things. I'm going to make them like a, a stations or they are like bus stops or they are like you know, rest areas and then you know, uh, milestones, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to tell you that this here was the mar marking that stage, okay? So I want you to also pay attention to that. And also, uh, this lecture is for everyone to have a model, guidelines for a model. You create the model to yourself that you, you live according to. And also, this lecture is to help me and my family and everybody here in the community to self-correct and improve. We self-correct. Allah gave us that ability, by the way, to self-correct. Not necessarily someone will help you all the time or has to help you. Yeah, that help would be there. But you start with self-correcting, muhasaba, and fixing your own thing. And that's what tawbah is all about. Yeah? Tawbah is a self-correcting mechanism. Tawbah is not only to regret. Tawbah is to intend not to do what you did wrong not to sincerely intending not to go back to it. And if it, if, it, if it relates to someone else that there is harm inflicted on them or anything like that, they have to fix that. That's called self-correcting. You, you correct yourself, you bring yourself back. And nobody will do that better than you to yourself. So this lecture also, I want you to reflect on those things. So self-correct, oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing that too. Oh yeah, that, that's, I need to fix that. Okay, if you need help, yeah, people can help you, inshallah. And we need to self-correct as families as well. You know, take what I said and uh, what I'm saying and the lessons I learned and try to reflect. I'm not going to come and inspect, inspect each and every family. You're the one who know as a, a family member, as a father or a, or a mother, as a brother or a sister, as a son or a daughter, as a husband and wife. You're the one who know. Okay, so you need to also look at that. And we need to self-correct as a community, as a jama'ah. So you need to self-correct as an individual between you and yourself. What do you need to do and fix? And me speaking to you today is a major sign for that. It's not because I'm an imam, I'm a leader, right? And, and sometimes an imam or a leader, their personal life is not so personal. It is like the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa their personal life is not so personal. You have the privilege of keeping your personal life and not sharing. But my personal life, and that's something I came to realize 
recently, by the way. Not very far, and in less than five years. I realized, I came to that self-realization that whether I like it or not, my personal life is important for everybody. Whether they have good intention or bad intention, they want to know. You know, whether they want to learn or they don't want to learn, or they're concerned about my well-being or not concerned about my well-being, they intend good for me or they intend bad for me, at the end of the day, my personal life is something important for everybody. So, I might take it as a positive, I might take it as a negative. It is actually sometimes positive and sometimes also negative. You following what I'm saying here? So that's why it's important for me to use that as the vehicle for the community that to learn. And subhanAllah, this is a ni'mah from Allah. You do not have to expose your personal life. No, I am doing that for you to a certain extent. So then you can understand things that maybe you'll understand tonight that you are struggling to understand f for years, right? So things, things like that. So with that said, the subject is about the, my journey to the PhD. This is actually a symbolic thing. Journey, we are all in a journey since we are born, right? Since we were born until we die, this is a journey. Then another journey of eternity starts. We all understand that. Each one of us have a journey also, small journeys. Your journey to graduate college, your journey to get married, your journey until your children got married, the journeys, you know. So all those journeys part of. But generally you have a goal, you have an end destination. So the destination here was the PhD. Was this the final destination? You think this is my final destination? No. Why you think that? Hassan, knowledge. I remember <laughs> when I was um, five years old, and my father, Sheikh Mustafa, Allah, he's about, I think he arrived now in Houston airport, in Egypt. <laughs> May Allah give him long life and protect him and bless his, uh, his knowledge. That I used to memorize Quran, and that's the first lesson for everybody, by the way. I used to hold the Mus'haf four or five hours every day. A five-year-old kid, you know, like my son is five-year-old, is jumping up and down now, you know, jumping around. But when I was five, I memorized like three, four Jews, I remember that, you know, so when I'm five. When I was four, I memorized Jews, Amman, entered the school, everybody was six years old, I was four years old, the youngest kid, always crying, always pushed, always bullied, <laughs> always short. <laughs> so I was, I was that kid. Uh, yeah, supposed to be the pre-K, but I was in first grade. For some other reason, yeah, but it happened, right? And they discovered when I was in second grade that I am not even qualified to be in first grade. You know, it was too late though to remove me anywhere. So I used to cry a lot to my mom and to my dad, all the way from five to until I was like eight. 10 years old when I finished memorizing the Hifz, the Quran. And that was the mark of the first achievement I had, memorizing the Quran, right? Just still a kid, but memorizing the Quran, oh yeah, I achieved that, everybody liked it, and I'm doing competitions, and I'm reading the Quran from memory, and you know, it made me feel like I'm in heaven, you know, like I'm appreciated, I'm all of that. So that was the first mark or achievement that made me feel it was okay to go through what I did. But did I like it? Absolutely not. <laughs> I was asking, why I have to be the one holding the mushaf, sitting like, you know, in the village, the homes, the door is always open. The, the village, the, your main do house door is always open. Yani. People come in and out. And, Assalamu alaikum, tfaddal, come eat, go, like that. Yani. It's an issue. But I used to sit like this and watching the kids playing in the street. See the torture? And those kids are my friends. And those kids are with my school. And they're playing soccer and having fun and rolling in the mud and all this kind of thing. And I'm the one who's sitting there holding the Muslim, crying and, you know, and sometimes the whole day I don't do anything. Because if I finish my lesson, my sabbat, I go play. If I don't finish my lesson, you're stuck. And I did not understand why. Also, 
a little bit forward, when I'm in high school, when I'm in middle school, uh, you know, and then, you know, beginning of high school, I don't want to continue this religious studies. Why I have to be like religious studies? Why I cannot be like other? And then, you know, when I went to college, why I have to be an imam, why I have to be a sheikh, a religious leader? My father is enough. Plus. And why I'm being pushed while my two other brothers are not? See, now it's even the challenge is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> to other brothers, my father is not like, <laughs> he's investing on me only, you know. Fast forward, when I came here to the United States and I did, now I found the answers for all those questions. So lesson number one, sometimes you cannot interpret what is happening to you at the moment. You can see that you are unlucky at the moment. Hmm? You can see that you are less privileged at the moment. You can see others better than you enjoying their life at the moment when you are thinking like that. But what Allah is hiding for you 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ahead, you do not know that. So instead of wasting your time unhappy and unsatisfied with what you have, believe that Allah has a wisdom for sure and you want to see it later. If you have that attitude, you're going to see it later. If you don't have that attitude, it's going to pass you and you will never see it. You know, looking from my position, I said, you know, subhanAllah, all this time I, you know, invested and then, you know, this marriage did not work and, and all of that. Then you see, oh no, there was a reason. Alhamdulillah, you have kids, you know, they are amazing, you know, and they are like my life. And this is like, so it's not that bad like people think. Maybe. As I said, in your transportation, the experience were not good, but you reached. And if you look even closer, you will find the experience itself is not as bad as you think. It didn't work, yeah. That's okay. But for a reason or another, that was part of Allah's grand plan. To be something better. Okay? So that's a lesson. Never ever Say, why I am like that and everybody is enjoying whatever. So now when I'm looking here now, I was in Egypt uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. I stayed there for a month. Every time I go to Egypt, I can see now. I can see 40 plus years later, not 40 days, not 40 weeks, not 40 months, 48 years, yeah, and four decades later. Why I was sitting at the Mus'haf there while my friends are playing soccer and enjoying their life. I can see now where they are and where I am. It's exactly like here. If they have a religious issue or a family issue or something like, like that, they come to me to help and solve. Right? Now, do I have a soccer question to ask them? No. I'm not saying that they are failures, that they are successful. Some of them lawyers, some of them doctors, some of them, you know, they are not failures. Don't think like I'm putting them down, yeah. They succeeded also in their way, yeah. Maybe they were wondering also, why this guy is memorizing Quran and we are playing, you know. So he can become someone that we benefit from when we grow and we become someone that he benefits from when he grows. You see the idea now? I hope it is clear what I'm trying to push here is very clear. So sometimes you are satisfied with something and it's not good for you in the future. Sometimes you are not satisfied with something and it is actually very good for you for the future. The person sitting in front of you now is the result of all the successes and the failures of all those times were sick, was psychologically hurt, was down, was up, you know, experiences. You know, things that worked and things did not work. All of this part of my make. So I'm not, I don't want anyone of us here went through some hardship to feel that that took away something from you. No, actually that chiseled you. It formed you. Huh? It made you look different. It make you look different. It's not like something like, you know, bad and taking away from you. As long as your jawhar, your essence, 
which is the iman and the relationship of Allah Azza Jal is intact, all of this is changing the format. You know how to change the format? Like you're changing your furniture at home, you're changing your computer, you're changing your setup, you're changing your work, changing like your staff. Yeah, it's exactly like that. I'm single, then you're married, then you're divorced, then you're up, then you grow, then you're this. Format is changing. But inside of here, I'm still the same abd of Allah. Actually, it becomes stronger. Believing in Allah more. Having more experience. Falling down many times. So, you know, when people say that, I said, watch that one. Because, you know, I, I went through that before. Khali balak, you know. Pay attention. So, uh, this is what? So, where did this journey of the PhD actually started in my head? When I was in college, back in the 90s, every student achieving, especially achieving in college and, you know, doing good in the class, head of the class, you know, ahead all the time, thinking that to be bigger, bigger and better. Oh, I'm going to graduate and I'm going to go to the academic line, right? And I'm going to uh, be appointed in the college. I'm going to do my master's and I'm going to do my PhD. I'm going to be like that doctor who's teaching me like these things. I was there. But then, what did stop that? Coming to the United States. Yani my friends who were with me in college, in Al-Azhar, now they are heads of departments of Islamic studies and everything that, in Al-Azhar. The, the, my Dufa the class of 1994, right? They are now, they are in that big positions, head of departments. You know, heads of departments, like full professors, they have the tenure, everything, you don't know, they are there. So, they are like that. And now I'm, I just got a PhD, some of them were sitting there in my defense and they were laughing. <laughs> Actually, some of them was qualified to, to be in the committee that I defend in front of them. But it will become like favoritism and all of that, so that was out of the picture. So those are the ironical thing and funny things happening, yeah. I, so coming to the United States. Now subhanAllah, same thing. I felt at a certain time I come to the United States, I'm an Imam in ISGH and look my friends, they have masters and they have the PhD and I'm still an Imam in ISGH. And I'm still an, see the comparison here is wrong. I'm telling you now because the comparison is wrong. Why the comparison is wrong? Because the criteria is wrong. Criteria I put in my head that having masters and PhD huh, is better than doing da'wah for the sake of Allah. That's my head. Like the true success is what? This. Then anything other than that, you are not considering success, even though it is success by the standards of people, of Allah, of those themselves. Like every time I go visit Egypt, they become jealous. Said, man, come take my masters and let me go to the United States. And then now they are saying, what did we achieve? What do you think we achieved? Academic teaching class and professor such and such and all of that. And how many Muslims came Muslims in your hand? How many people you solved their problems? How many marriages you performed? How many funerals you went? How many lessons you taught people? See now, now I'm seeing. It's like we switched the roles. <laughs> So at the time I'm saying like, why am I doing this and everybody, and those whom I'm looking up and see, thinking that they achieved everything are the ones who are telling me, you are the actual achiever here. You are the actual achiever here. And look at your thesis, even it is from your practical life, from the things that you do. It is not some, something theoretical, you know, something that we think it is. No, it's actually every word in it coming from your life. So I hope you understand the lesson here as well. So that started there. When I came here 2000, I signed up for a master's in uh, University of Houston, Clear Lake. Masters. I wanted to do like family therapy and everything. So Brother Reza, this is the first time you hear this. It's an old, an old idea. Yani. It is not something new. <laughs> yeah, that, that bothered me like since that time, long time. 2000. That was like two years into my marriage at that time, first marriage. So I felt that this, this needs to be addressed. These things need to be addressed. 
So things from the masjid, from the community, as well as from personal things. So, you know, I, I think beyond just fixing my own problem, what is causing this and what is causing that cause and why people doing like this. Then I signed up for, for that. And they took three, four courses, three, four classes, 2000. And then SubhanAllah family pulled me down with the busy, the expenses, all of that I could not continue. For family reason, for financial reason, I could not continue. And maybe Yani, to give you a point of reference, some point of reference. How many of you here were working in 1996? Yeah, I know Brother Zabino, 1996. Yeah. I, I used to work full times for $950 a month, right? For about a year. And then when, uh, <laughs> when um, promotion came, it became 1250 And then when I got married, it was like $1,500. So my first big uh, salary was in 2004, $4,000 at that time. You know. It's a good point of reference. Brother Akbar. So can you imagine someone like starting his life and working for a thousand dollars a month? <laughs> yeah. So I could not finish my master's, even though I was happy. I was acing all my classes, right? All those courses I was like, even some of the professors tried to do in some intervention, you know, like uh, and they're like, why? Why are you quitting? Like why? You would, actually why? You are an asset to the class. Which, get this, get that. You know, I said I cannot take loans. I cannot do that. Anyways, yeah, it did not work. All the way until 2012. That's when I got my master's in education. And then I wanted to do a PhD, right? But for same exact reason, but this time is not financial. It is more family and social. I did not have the clear head to do things. Right? I started a small company, the Roots and Sprouts, and all of that in 2012 to continue, you know, like to survive. Yeah. And I had hard head too. I had big hard, hard headed. I was a hard headed person, yeah, like that, uh, very hard to deal with, you know, especially very hard to uh, recruit in, a, in an employee kind of framework. It's very hard. Wild, yeah needs special attention, you know, needs special <laughs> way to deal with, to, you know, this genie cannot stay in the bottle. <laughs> and everybody wants to bottle you. <laughs> Everyone wants to bring that big, big, you know, aptitude, put it in the bottle. And that was like, kind of like, until now, still I cannot fathom that. You know, why everybody wants to shrink you? What? You know, everybody wants like to bring you in and instead of like allowing you to go like that everybody's like oh you stay here you sit here you know like a child who wants to run around but you don't uh, sit here that's what i'm feeling and from inside so it's very very hard for me to do that so i started all of this alhamdulillah master is good and i completely forgot and give up on the idea of phd just be honest with and while i'm doing that i started doing subhanallah the Qur quran Quran, my journey with Quran is another journey. We talk about another time. But it started from like four year old until exactly, exactly 2017. Yani, I'm born 1973, right? Maybe that would make me young in front of some people and old in front of others. So I don't care about saying it anymore because all my life, whenever I say 1973, oh, you're a kid. <laughs> All my peers and everybody, whenever I say 1973, until I turned 40. Exactly when I turned 40, everybody starts saying, oh, he's 40 years old, Khalas, you know. Doesn't matter now what you <laughs> were born. I'm almost 50 now. So, 1973, four, four years old, 1977. From that time, my journey with Quran started, and it finished exactly 2017. And that's another lesson for everybody. And still I'm learning, huh? Quran does not end, yani I'm a Hafs Saab, I'm a Mufti Saab, I'm a Mullah Saab, I'm whatever Saab it is. Sheikh Al-Fulani, Al-Qari Al-Fulani, all of them are not yani. All of these things, just you're scratching, scratching the surface, you know? 
and you will die while mama utitum min al-ilm illa qalila keep that in your head qalil very little nothing compared to the ilm of allah the ilm of the prophet sallallahu the ilm of the sahaba and you keep coming down until you are a dot anybody of you saw the video of how many suns there is in the you saw that video you know the sun in our solar system compared to the next one compared to the next, until you it's like a dot you cannot see anything and the other one is billions of you know light years in diameter only <laughs> so it's like that yeah you know, that every time you learn something you think that there is until you, you know, where am i you know like if you come down ilm of allah ilm of rasulullah ilm of the sahaba ilm of the tabi'in ilm of uh, someone like ibn taymiyyah ilm of someone like sheikh radawi مثلا then who am i يعني, at the end of the day muhammad who are who are we you know where am i in this so basically i started doing the quran in 2017 i achieved the highest ijaza in all 10 qira'at so it took from you know 77 until 2017 kam sana exactly 40 so you can say a person finished the external parts of quran yani the certification part in 40 years not the ilm itself yani i spent 40 years learning how to recite quran how to recite it's not the tafsir i'm not talking about tafsir sheikh hassan here i'm talking about what Qiraat al-Qur'an faqat, tajweed. For somebody go and they take qa'idah and uraniyah in a few weeks and come, mashallah, they are like, <laughs> I'm the shaykh al-Islam. I'm going to teach everybody, you know, like. لا. لو عرفت قدرك لا أفاض الله عليك من العلم. If you know your place, Allah Azza Jalla will open his gates of knowledge for you. It takes a long time. And somebody said, Shaykh, I want to recite like you. May Allah make you recite better than me, akhi. But it took me 40 years exactly to be who I am. And every day, it takes me up to today to recite like you heard me or you want to hear me. And if, I, if I recite an Isha, this is the result of from four years until today. And when I recite tomorrow Fajr, until Fajr. you right. And when I'm 60 years old, if I'm still alive, this is, this is, the, this is the accumulation of that. So never say, oh, I want to be like that sheikh. You will never be like him. But you can be better than him. If Allah open another, another line for you. Sometimes people get shortcuts. Sometimes people get a, another line. Subhanallah. Somebody have a good voice. But somebody have ilm and tafsir. Somebody knows how to teach the juid. How to teach it. But they don't have a good voice. Ma mushkil yani. Then subhanallah, when I came into the struggle family <clears throat> which as I said I'm not mentioning any personal things but struggle yeah. maybe in someone other than me or other than my uh, the mother of my children could have made it would have succeeded but, but this did not work for us right for many reasons yeah. and then that idea came back again in the worst of times financially socially emotionally psychologically you are down in everything you feel it? I want you to understand that. And that's when people give up. And I am telling each and every one of you here, at that moment, you need to put the highest goal you can. That's my experience. Do it. At the moment when you feel that you're done, you are so down, that is the moment you should plan for the highest success that you can think about. You know why? Can anybody guess why I'm saying that? Ahsant. So it takes away your feeling down. You are looking to the, to the stars. They said if you want to reach the moon, look at the stars. You do not look at the moon. Because what if I fail? So I haven't reached the moon. So always you think beyond what you think you can achieve. So at that time, talking to a therapist, talking to a psychiatrist, said, you have to succeed. In here, if you go in this culture here, they said, you start dating, go to club, whatever it is, right? They tell you to come out of whatever you are in. I'm not saying good or bad here. And our Islam saying good or bad, right? Halal or haram, that's our limitations, correct? 
But why people here, therapists and all that, suggest those things? You might say, oh, a'udhu billah, therapists over here do this and that. But why are they doing that? Ask yourself. Yeah, a'udhu billah, I agree with you. A'udhu billah. You're not going to go to clubs, you're not going to date people, you're not going to meet, you're not going to drink, you're not going to do any of that. But why are saying this? Because if you know why they are saying this, then you can come up with, uh, come up with the Islamic alternative. Is that clear? So you have to think how people think, like I was saying in the khutbah. What is role model mean? What does role model mean in the United States here, in this culture, in the West? What does that mean? I want to see what does that mean and how they make a role model to impact people. And I want to give the Islamic model, the Islamic alternative. But to say, A'udhu Billah, had haram, had blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. I get it. I agree with you, Allah. I'm not saying it's halal. But what is our alternative? So I found they are saying all of this for you to get out of your mental state. You agree? That's the main idea here. Is because if you surrender to failure, you will fail more. And then you are physically going to be down and emotionally going to be down and you want to give up and you have depression and the life is worthless and you know the rest of the story, you know. So the whole idea, they tell you go see people, go have vacation, go do this, go do that, you know. So just go over the situation you are in. They want you to move. They do not want you to be still water. Does our Islam say that? Our Islam actually says more than that. Says whatever happened to you is by Allah's, uh, and it tells you always walking to Allah. Your five times prayer is not going to change because you are in a bad state. Yeah, and because you are a divorced man, will make them three prayers for you? Huh? You're not going to fast Ramadan this month, yani, or this year. Can can you go to Hajj or not? Actually, it would be a better idea actually to do it. That's why the first thing I did is went to Umrah. Went to Umrah. The day I saw the court uh, order and everything, Umrah, ala tool. And that is why, because I, and I know, at that time, you have to prove to yourself you're still alive. You're still a believer. You're still with Allah Azza Jal. You're still healthy. You're still there. You have a, a da'wah to deliver to people. So what is a personal thing? Uh, even a failure, yani. even I'm wrong, or whoever wrong, it doesn't matter. But there is life. There is much bigger chance. That's why we said second chance. I use the word second chance even though this is the same chance. Allah is giving you chance after chance. <laughs> and second chance is not uh, the term I'm looking for here. But you are every day is a chance, isn't it? Every day is a new opportunity or not? Yeah. Every time you wake up in the morning and say, Alhamdulillah, الذي أحيانا بعد ما أمتنا وإليه النشور. After he took our soul, Allah gave it to us back. It's a second chance. Every single day. You know, every time you drive your car and you come back home, that's a second chance. Right? Every time you arrive at your work, it's another chance to prove yourself better. Every time, every minute is another opportunity for you to be better, a good person. Then I said at that time, you know what? And that's why if you, if you remember the Eid Khutbah, when I said your education, your relation, and your, your health, Remember that? Those three? Those three I came up with. It's not like I read anywhere. Yani. I sat, I wrote down lots of things. My feelings, my emotions, my anger, my frustrations. Boom, boom, boom. Write down everything. And that's a good way, by the way. They call it, uh, you know, uh, idea dumping ideas, you know. Whenever you have a situation, you know, so write, write, write. And sometimes I don't want to write, I recorded the voice, voice notes. And with that compilation, I read, and then I see things popping up. Most of the things that you do wrong, because you did not know how to do them right. Some things you do intentionally wrong. Sometimes you do wrong intentionally, right? You know it's haram, but you do it. You know you're supposed to read, but you don't read. So that's not most of the time. But most of the time, we make mistakes because we do not know how to make right. How to avoid that? Education. And Rasulullah said, the best cure for ignorance, ignorance here is not like the derogatory meaning. Yani. Ignorance means you are ignorant of something. You need to know. The best cure for ignorance is asking questions. 
انما دواء العي السؤال uh, I said education where did you stop I'm going to do from education you want to PhD I said oh, I'm going to get a PhD and I'm going to tell you something funny I said I'm going to learn a new language <laughs> guess which language anybody huh what else that was one of my suggested ones but that's, that was not what I chose huh that that was also another one Spanish. Chinese <laughs> I learned it actually for a few months <laughs> for a few months I learned and I you know like you know uh, I you know, tried to but you know I got at the end you know it serves its purpose you know the service the phase yeah it serves the phase you know like Chinese even I signed up for classes online and I wanted to get a private tutor and I was going crazy with this one that's why I'm telling you, like in this time, and this is a lesson for all of us here. Don't only have uh, ideas without a plan. They become just uh, dreams, like, you know, hopes, which is good, but they will not mature to become something else. But whenever you have ideas, make them goals and work toward them. I hope this recording here, Muhammad, inshallah, we're going to cut those parts. Huh? What? So, always, if you do not make your goals and create objectives and a plan and a strategy and the win timeline, they're going to become like wild dreams and most likely going to forget them. Trust me. That's why a person, they say a person writing their plans and their ideas, 80% chance more than others to achieve. You're going to achieve. Even if you achieve 20% only, but you're going to achieve. So you are 80% more likely that you're going to achieve. Is that clear? All right. So I said, I'm going to learn Chinese. It's very, very hard. But it was, you know, I did not feel obligated. I have to finish it at that time because I am going whatever. It was something getting my mind off. Wadah? Getting my mind off. And actually, when I'm learning Chinese, this is, this is a pretty tight language, I'm telling you. You know, like these people here, like, oh, they say, wa, 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 like each one of those have a different meaning. Just with the sound, yeah. And you can be an insult or you're praising someone. You can say, I'm going to stuff the black duck in your mouth. Or you can say, you know, like, you know, I invite you to dinner. Something like that. <laughs> can you imagine now how interesting this was? So somebody going in an experience that brings everybody down, you have that kind of activity in your life. Right? Then I said, also I need to learn religiously. So I start going toward the softeners of the heart. I'm going to read every day like 10, 15 pages on that side. To take your soul also. Because your soul can be damaged, by the way. It can be damaged. It will have bruises. That's what depression is. Huh? Your soul, it gets hit. It gets dent as well. And it becomes very hard to bring it back again. It's like ironing some uh, wrinkles. You know, ironing the wrinkles? You don't want your soul to become like that. Your body, your health, that's okay. You know, that's okay. Even if you have scars physically, but your soul has scars, that's dangerous. That's bad. And if you leave yourself to these negative feelings and, you know, feeling of transgression and why and, you know, feeling bitter at people and revenge and all of that kind of thing, it dents your soul. It takes away from you as a human being, you know, so be careful of those things because, you know, you become, you know, vengeful. You just want to destroy those who are in front of you. And that consumes you daily, 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 drains you. You wake up in the morning not happy and you're not enjoying anything in life and people talk to you and your head is somewhere else. And I'm sure those who are going through that experience understand exactly what I'm talking about. It is very hard. It's not easy, wallahi. It's, it's fire inside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's fire inside. And if you do not control that fire, it becomes wild. You know, like wildfires? Hassan here is a firefighter, mashallah. You know how the fire is, and he can tell you. It takes seconds to become 10, 15 times more, and a few minutes to become 100 times more. And it destroys everything. So if you wait, sometimes for seconds, you cannot come back. Let alone by minutes and weeks and months, 
with that feeling, you know, of being helpless, powerless, and the other person in front of you is taking away from you what you, they are not supposed to, and bringing you down and talking and doing look, those things, and then add to that that community volunteers are blowing in the fire. I'm saying it, I know, and I said I'm not going to point fingers, but I'm going to say facts. And you, you, you know. Praise be to Allah, the one who did not make sins have smell. One of the scholars said, Alhamdulillah, الذي لم يجعل للذنوب رائحة. Praise be to Allah that he did not make a stinky smell for our sins. Can you imagine if someone backbites or talk, he comes in the next time with a foul mouth, uh, mouth uh, smell. Can they pray Fajr with us? Can, they, can you make trade with them? Say, oh, a backbiter. Oh, a person who lied. Oh, a person who cheats. Oh, like that. خلاص, we die better. <laughs> you see, Rahmah of Allah? Wallahi rahma, akhwan. Don't you think it's rahma? It is rahma. So please repent it to Allah quietly. لكن الذنوب لا ريحة قلنا اتفضحنا يا شيخ. يعني would have been exposed by now. فبيبول فولنتير تو طب واي يا اخي يعني what did I do to you? Why you hate me like this? Like like why would you volunteer to talk to a husband against his wife or talk to a wife against her husband? I just want to know, يعني, and I'm sharing with you now, that's a disease, you know? It's a disease. Like, why would you volunteer? If you are not fixing, and you do not want to help fix, why you want to help destroy? Even if this thing is going to end up with divorce, why you want to participate in that? Especially sisters, يعني, why do you want to have a hand in that? Why you want, like they say, blood on your hand? Lee. Ask, ask that, I'm asking that question because this is one question I did not find answer, Yan. Like I, I know when two people fighting or two people struggling, I know why I would say, Yaqwanna, Yani, please come back together, you know, forget, forgive each other. I know there is a reason for that. Sahaja. There is a reason. Allah Azza wa said the best reward is for the one who does that. Fi reason, Yan. If even if a person I do not like and he said the Shaykh have sabr, it's okay. I know his reason. Doesn't matter, his reason is right or wrong, but the reason for what he's doing. Now, two people, they are disputing and they are talking about divorce. If you are not there, you are not a sheikh, you are not a mediator, you are not a judge, you are not anyone who have the authority to separate between them. Huh? Now, what would make you come and advise them to divorce? There has to be abuse or something. What, what if there is nothing like that? Inta ba shogulitak e tawati le hinta. Why are you volunteering to come and say, oh by the way, there is a bigger lawyer. Oh by the way, you know, oh by the way, they said it about you. Oh, take them to the court. Take him to court. He's hiding money. Oh, I, I did this lawyer and he did my divorce and I got half 50%. Yeah, go ahead and do it. And I arf sabab. What is the reason for that? Yani why a sister would volunteer to go support a sister to get divorced? Who are you? Yani? Yani why you are pushing toward that? Why are you pushing for that to happen? And you know what? When it happens and the sister gets divorced, all sisters away from her. Because each one is afraid that she's going to take her husband from her. Think, think about it. And I'm going to look at the experience. Yeah, you find five, six, seven sisters. Anyone, they just smell it, kid. You know, a sister is going to get divorced. They all support group, all two, all support group, whether they are divorced or not. The minute that woman divorced, she does not join the herd. She does not join the group. Like she becomes the black sheep, all two on the other side. Later, and she is a prospect for my husband now. You know, مشكلة الآن. Especially if she's young and pretty and all of that and doesn't have children or anything, it's a Now we wanted you to have a divorce, but stay away, go somewhere else. For men, it's a completely different game. Completely different game. Every man who has an issue with his manhood stays behind the brother who's fighting. <laughs> Again, everyone has an issue with his own in his own, but he does not have the guts or the courage to handle it, 
When somebody, yeah, brother, yeah, man, yeah. Do it, man. <laughs> Do it. The brother is thinking about a second marriage. Yes, brother, represent us. You know, go ahead. Go ahead. And if he married, he goes to his wife and says, See, the sheikh did it, you know. <laughs> and if the sheikh feels it, I know how he feels. You know, that's why I did not marry on you. I love you, baby. <laughs> so, mashallah, yani is tamam, uh, yani, you know. Everybody have their own uh, agenda. Own agenda, ready. وكل هذا خطا كله غلط you know كله غلط sometimes we even do the halal in wrong way we look at halal wrong way oh did you know that طب يا اخي did he do halal حرام ولا حلال لا 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 no يا شيخ حلال why why you are talking why are you talking if it is halal if it is why are you talking the reason you are talking because you could not do it and you want to do it <laughs> you, did, you could not do it and somebody did it and you don't you're not courageous you're courageous enough then everybody said the law and this and that and everybody trying to evade taxes nobody talks about that well, everybody try to evade taxes everybody try to be smart everybody try to speed everybody try to get out of the law nobody blame each other يعني. why when it comes to this issue كله مسك لللو والبتاع والأمور يعني. why خلاص هيز افير ليت هيم ديل وذ ات رايت somebody marry does not marry have two have three his business يا اخي مالكش دعوه انت is keep mind your own self لا he will come there how can he succeed we will make sure he does not succeed in that one because success in this one means a direct threat to us so hit hit hard And that is how it is. That's why, in my thesis, one of the things, I said, if you are in the United States, never think about a second wife. And I'm telling you, it is not because the Sharia of Allah or anything else, don't. Just don't do it. It's not for you, it's not for this time. Sister, be happy, inshallah. I am going to advise all the brothers. They will not do it. If they do it, Sheikh Mamdu has nothing to do with you. I'm not encouraging you. You are in your own, ya habibi. All right? I'm just telling you from experience, huh? أخوكم جرب يعني. اسأل مجرب ولا تسأل طبيب. Ask someone who tried. It's not going to work. Even if you find two who agree, who love each other, who will serve you, will be good with you, and they're, mashallah, accepting and anything, your jama'a will not accept it. Will make sure destroying it. أنا بقولها لكم openly. I want somebody to stand and say, I challenge you. I am telling you it's not going to work. Even all parties agree, مش هتشتغل. It is not going to work. People will not be able to sleep until this finishes. Anybody want details? تعالى وانا I'll educate you. I stayed in this situation for two years. No single night. No single night of happiness. Single bus. Wahda leila kida sa'eeda. None. Zero. She said, brother said, I got a call. Somebody did. Somebody that. And the administration. And the message. And this one. And the law. And blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. Every time there is an issue. The one I'm marrying for my own happiness. Well, the community. I'm, I'm marrying the community also. <laughs> yani I feel I'm not married to two only. I'm married to 20. يعني what is this؟ شغل 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 يعني talk 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 how come؟ يعني the question that was <تصفيق> repeated on daily more than five times a day يعني أحسن أكثر من الصلاة يا عم الشيخ أكثر من الصلاة يعني how did it work؟ how is it working يعني؟ how how you are happy with why why you agree with something like this؟ that was the question why؟ ايه بقى يعني ماجيك عامل لكم سحر يعني سحر في جادو واي واي يو ار لاك كوايت خلاص انتل ذا بيرسون هاف ذير سيرتن ليميتيشن ولا نوت كوايت اني مور بس خلاص اند يو نو يور براذر هير از هارد هيدد خلاص ايفري ثينج مع السلام ايفري بادي يلا اوت ويل ستارت نيو نو بروبلم ام تيلينج يو دونت ثينك اباوت ذات توبيك اجين دونت جوك اباوت ات براذرز I don't want anybody to joke. 
about this. Sheikh, is there a second wife? There is a, don't joke about it. Leave it out of your dictionary. I'm telling you advice from يعني, practical. Leave it out of your dictionary. Until يعني, full Islam comes back. Then inshallah we, we talk. We, we'll see. يعني. يعني, when the jama'ah feels the need for something, they will come back to it. Until then, practically speaking, مش هينفع. It is not going to work. See, something I'm telling you is right, but will not. At that time, when I'm so down and so, I said, you know what? I need to set goals. PhD, I need to be physically fit, I need to be mentally stable, and I need my relationship, and I need to work on them. And those were my second chances that I was talking to you about in the beginning. Right? I'm giving you bits and pieces of things. And then I'll wrap up everything before Aisha, inshallah. So, I said, okay, this is how I'm going to achieve that. <clears throat> so I write PhD. I am here now with a master's degree. So now my, my um, distance is from master's degree to PhD. So it is not from high school to PhD. Yani. It's a shorter distance. They always say, like, imagine the wall is your, uh, is your destination. The wall in front of you is your destination. And you are where you're going to start, where you're standing, you're going to start. And your journey is a rubber band. This journey is what? Rubber band. That is how the journey is. The more you step, what happens? The tension is less. You know, there is a tension, right? There is tension that you pulled that rubber band, feet tension. Okay, tension pulling you, and it was, you know, feet tension. But if you take one step, is the tension the same? And it's less, 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 and there is no tension at all. So that's how you achieve your goal. I started educating myself on what I just told you now. I start learning online, you know, you know the, 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 the stages of grief, right? Start learning that, stages of grief. How to get out of your issue, how to do strategic planning, how to do critical thinking. I started taking classes like that, and I'm, I'm sharing with you. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, two or three trustworthy individuals, you know, my dad and uh, Dr. Salah and another person, like those are like the ones that I go to and my, make my circle limited. Of those, I can take their advices without even bothering to think. You know, I pinpointed those. I don't want to talk to somebody, give me an advice and think about it. You know, I wanted to have an action plan very quick. So I talk to people and say, this is what I'm thinking about. And they take, give you the, they say, I'm going to do that. And subhanallah, 90% of the time they were right. I'm not telling you 100% right? But they're ra'i sadeed. So choose someone like that when you are so down, make good plans. Huh? Realistic goals and make plans and have mashura from the best of the best of the best. It can be one person, two people, maximum three, don't go more than that. Right? And then focus. Yes, you are in pain. Yes, you are struggling. Yes, you have zulm. Yes, you are doing wrong yourself also. But there is a goal and every day you're going to say how close I am. You know those... Um, documents that, um, what do you call it in business? Like when you achieve something, it tells you 20%, 30%, 40%, you know, like progress, the pro progress uh, report or progress plan or progress sheet or something like that. Huh? Dashboard. Okay. So that's the one that when we're a team, everyone, like you are assigned, he's assigned, I'm assigned. Every time you said, I achieved this much. So it tells you that's 5%, that is 10%. I started doing that to myself. Yeah, so every day, ya khwani, I felt I'm closer to my goals, and that takes my mind off the struggle. How many of you prayed taraweeh with me here at this masjid in 2018? Right? I was going to court all the time in that Ramadan. You know, in that Ramadan, fasting, going there after tahajjud here, especially the last 10. After tahajjud here, I go to the court there at 8 a.m., stand there until maybe 2 or 3 p.m. 
and then come here and people, you know, many of them don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> and I'm smiling and everything. Do you know what, what's keeping me not, not being down? What I'm just telling you now, the Quran. So I switched everything to become positive, you know? And instead of saying, oh, I'm tired and all of that, it's affecting me, people will see me like gloomy and unhappy and all of that in Ramadan. Like, why, what, what is your yani, guilt? What is your crime? La. I said, that is a gift from Rabbul Alameen. You know? This is my personal, but this is my ibadah. This actually was making, I'm looking forward for it. I'm looking, you know, wanting to come, like wanting, because this is like, I forget myself. This is where I'm enjoying. I'm in Jannah now. Yes, but I find that because everybody, subhanAllah, let these experiences, you are unemployed or laid off or going through divorce or anything, affects you socially. La, 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 la. Actually, that is what's going to get you out of that is your interaction. If you can go to Umrah, Bismillah, you know. If you have uh, friends to come to the masjid, read Quran, learn a new language as I told you. Like, do something to prove to yourself you're still alive. You're still a human being. You're still a man. You're still a woman. You can function. You are priceless. You are valuable to Allah, to the community, to those who love you, to your family. You still have a lot to give, even if you lost something. That same thing when somebody dies, when somebody is divorcing, when you, your child or your parents, or doesn't matter what is the loss. You know, always, always stand up again. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he buried his daughters with his own hands. He buried Ruqayya, the wife of Uthman, and then he celebrated the, 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 the victory of Battle of Badr. Crying here and laughing here. Same. If anybody does that now, he said, oh, he does not have a heart. You know, the, uh, he died yesterday. Why this guy is like a hypocrite? No, no, no. Fi farah or fi huzn. They can exist at the same time, by the way. That's why in the Eid, I said, be happy with the Eid. Because Allah said, be happy. What if somebody dies in the Eid? You be happy with the ibadah of Allah, but you cry for losing that person. No problem. There is no, yani we feel bad, our heart is torn apart for our brothers and sisters in Syria and Palestine or Iraq, all over the world, or Pakistan or India or Kashmir or all of that. But at the day of Eid, I'm going to say Eid Mubarak, akhi, may Allah bless you and smile and laugh and give gifts and eat food. Why not? Eh, yani, is this haram to do? Does that make me a hypocrite that I'm not sad for the, la, I'm sad for the Muslim. When I sit, when I finish this party and happening of the Eid, I'll go cry in a corner in my house. That's okay. I don't have to show you I'm crying, يعني, to prove to you that I'm sad. No, I am sad, yes. I am going through this problem, yes. But you don't have to pay for it. And I need you, because if I make you pay for it and I make you feel my pain, then I cannot benefit from you back, ya ikhwani. See the, see the problem here? See the problem? If I am going through a divorce or through a problem, huh? now. you are my brother. So when I come to you and I'm always complaining and crying to you, now you are in a bad mood now. How are you going to help me, inshallah? How, how, يعني, how are you going to help me now? I just dumped my problems on you. It did not make me feel better. It didn't. Because I'm still going through it. Now you are with me in it. So how are you going to give me advice or give me a nasiha? You are already having extra on you now. So actually, it's not a healthy thing. لا, I will go pay a therapist. He gets paid to hear these ugly problems. That's his, he knows how to handle that. But then I come to the masjid with a smile, with an open heart, with all of this, and leave charged. So now my jama'ah did their job to be. And that's why I'm saying, why do you volunteer to get into people's problems if you are not help solving it? Please stay away, so at least you can be there for that person to come to you to be positive. Okay? So be busy with that. No, don't interfere. Be the positive charger for a person in trouble. Don't go put salt on their wound without you even knowing. If you are professional, fine. If you are not professional, malak shida'u. Don't interfere. We're going to do an FRC. Send them to the professional. And that's it. And don't say, what did he do? What did he do? Oh, the lawyer doesn't do anything. Oh, tell the lawyer to do that. Oh, the lawyer. Don't forget to make them sign. Leave it alone. And sometimes, wallahi, people were going through divorce for little problems that could have been solved. 
But once is grabbed in the court arena, gone. And it became very ugly. Became very ugly, too late. Even people themselves cannot pull out of it. They are in the system. You are in the system and it's grinding. It is lahma mafruma. You become a ground meat. It's too late, خلاص. you cannot make it whole anymore. You can make a burger out of it, but <laughs> it will not be a piece, a chunk of meat anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, khwani, don't interfere. And I'll, I'll tell you a hadith of Rasulullah. Rasulullah said, Mal'oonun man khabbab amra'atan ala zawjah. A person is cursed, the one who helps a wife against her husband. And don't tell me, what if he's abusive? You are not helping her against him. You are helping her to break free. But I'm talking about against. The Prophet ﷺ said, against. Yani this can be solved, but you were one reason that it was not solved. Then la'na. The la'na of Allah comes upon you. I don't want to make that dua, yani, because I feel scared. I feel scared, you know. If I make that dua now, I said, may Allah do this to those whoever, you know, then it might come hit certain people in the jama'ah. Yeah. And I don't want to do that dua. Because we have a chance to self-correct. But that's how scary it is. If you become a support factor, supporting factor, in a divorce of a couple that they could have been saved, you are under the la'na of Allah Azza wa if this is something that you are okay with, okay. Even doubt should make you quiet. Akhi, sister, brother, go seek nasiha. Pull away. It's either you give nasiha or you guide them to give nasiha and leave it at there. I'm telling you again because wallahi, I tell you a lot of time it is because what people do. And sometimes it's even worse than that. Someone come to me for divorce like a, a couple of months ago. And I'm finishing the divorce and the man divorced. خلاص, يعني the court paper finished everything. Then uh, a person calls me, me out of the blue. Sheikh called me, called me, called me. Okay, I'm busy. Why are you not calling me? Why don't I? Okay, I call. Assalamu alaikum. Why are you? He said, I am the guy who's going to marry that woman. Said, but her divorce is not finished yet. <laughs> you see, <laughs> her divorce is not finished yet. Who are you? I said, yeah, I'm her fiance. Min imta kalam inshallah. Yani since then, yani. Since she started the process. Ya halawa. You know, it's a, and it's not the first time, by the way. And that's a disease also. And I'm going to finish, inshallah. This is a disease also. We're going to talk about, inshallah, in sessions of talaq and everything. People want to secure you know, a spouse before leaving a spouse. This you can do in a job, but you cannot do in marriage. For a job, you can do that. For shoes, you can do that. For clothing, yeah. Car, it's okay. Yani. House, that's fine. You secure one before you leave one. <laughs> huh? I advise you actually to do. Before you leave the house, find, before you leave the job, find them. But before you leave marriage, you secure another spouse, and this applies for the sisters only, by the way. This is, this is bad. And for the man to go and talk to a woman who is going through trouble, you know, so he makes it faster, oh, I'm gonna be your husband, don't worry. You know, that's la'na too. Why did Allah Azza wa when he says Muharramat, you know Muharramat, right? Prohibited uh, your mother, your sisters. You know the ayah, right? Hurrimat alaykum ummahatukum abunatukum. At the end, Allah said, wal muhsanatu min nisa And the married women are haram on you. What is the point? يعني? When I know married women cannot marry two guys. صح? يعني I'm not going to marry my mother. Whether the father or the husband is alive or... يعني you cannot marry. You cannot marry your sister. My your sister is not married, right? And you cannot marry her. She's not married. But you still cannot marry her, right? What about married woman? She cannot marry you. صح? Why Allah says she's haram on you? Have you thought about this before? Yeah, what did Allah said, and the married woman is haram on you. Huh. I know, but, but she's in the but what is the, what does that ayah add? 
ما هو معروف انه هي حرام يعني انا اقول لك الشيء اللي انت مش قادر تمسكه ما تمسكوش طب ما انا مش قادر امسكه فهمت قصدي يعني when I tell you the things that you cannot hold don't hold it when I know I cannot hold it so why you are telling me not hold it يعني don't even think about holding it you understand it فهمتني يا اخواني يعني انا بقول لك this is mine ملكي ملكي ها huh? Don't think to own it. When I'm owning it already. But don't think to own it. Don't own it. Yani what does that mean? Don't even think about having it. Don't think about touching it without my permission. Don't think about using it. Thinking also is not good. So that means, محصنات من النساء, you cannot propose to them, you cannot approach them, you cannot look to them as someone available. Yani. You cannot do that. That is what it means. Fayakhwani, this, these are the things that we learned to wrap up. Everybody of us have a journey. The minute you want to decide your journey, you have to have a destination and you have to have a plan. Always plan more, especially when you are so down. You know, when you, th- you think that life is gone, that is life starting. When you think I'm not good anymore, you are the best. When you think I cannot achieve, I'm broken, you are whole. When you think that everybody is against you, Allah ma'ak, Allah is with you. Man or woman doesn't matter here, I'm talking in general, right? You lost job, you are divorced, or you are going through divorce, or anything like that, you still abdo of Allah. As long as your soul and your heart, they are not dent, they are not scratched, you're good. You can have bruises, but you're still good. You know, sometimes they are, those scars are, you know, like a sign of honor, <laughs> that you are really suffered in this life, you know, struggled in this life. As a jama'ah, we need to self-reflect. It's either you are help, part of the solution, or part of a problem. If you are not part of a solution, don't be part of a problem. And by the way, all of us do it with good intentions. If you are not professional, if you don't know what to do, if you did not do it before, ask a professional or refer to one. But don't interfere if you are not going to solve. Sometimes people even want to solve, but they end up doing wrong. Education is the best. Learn. When you find yourself going through these situations, learn. Put the highest thing. PhD. You can get one. But I don't have master. Then get a master to get PhD. <laughs> this is part of, of it. Oh, I don't even have a bachelor degree. Get one, eh? Get closer. Why not? And I'm advising everyone here. You all can get, can get a, a bachelor degree or a master's in Islamic studies. What is stopping you? You. You all can memorize the Quran. Even you, you end up memorizing one juz. Who's stopping you? You. And I'm telling you, I'm out of two divorces, not one. I'm financially down with a big number. I'm not going to share the number with you. Yani. The big number, because in debt. And I am having pressure. And people in the community talking. And I'm not addressing uh, them. Or I'm not you know, quiet. And I have a job, and I have six children, six children, all with me, in my custody, يعني, six, all of them, and two of them babies, right? And I'm having that, and I decide to do my PhD. And I did it. Alhamdulillah. So you can do what is less than that, and you have no excuse. يعني. One of my, the, the niyas I have, I said, I want to do this. And I had times that I wanted to give up. I'm, I'm not lying, you know. I had times that I was down, giving up and all that. I said, no, you know what? No. If I give up now, lots of people will be affected by this. I have to come out very strong so people can do 1%, 2%, 80%, no problem. Because someone did this. So I got out of my debts. Alhamdulillah. All the children, good, healthy, educated. Alhamdulillah. I got my PhD. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And I signed for another program, by the way. Inshallah, it will be another surprise. Yani. I, I signed for another program. Inshallah, when it finishes, I'm going to tell you. And another program coming after that. I'm not going to stop learning. <laughs> I'm telling you I'm going to continue because I tested the sweetness of it. I tested the power of this. Function, and you still can function, and even sometimes function better than when you were in that problem. I'll prove to myself that I can function better. 
I did not do my PhD when I was married. I will do it when I'm not. In the middle of all the problems. I found time? Yes, I found time. Was it hard? Absolutely terrible. Can you imagine five, six hours for three years? Every day. Five, six hours. So sleep four, five hours only. And sometimes scatter it, not together. Work and kids, school and money and this and that and study. And you know, whoever studied graduate studies knows what that means, you know, research and they know exactly what does that mean. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, I hope you got something from today that inspires you, inshallah Rabbil Alameen. You are worthy more than you think you are. Allah Azza Jal already give you that worth. We created them. Allah Azza Jal said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا إِهْ بَنِي آدَمْ Allah honored you. So why you think of yourself worthless? Hmm. Allah said, I make the cream for you, you are high. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَوَا السَّلَى سَفِرِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْسَلَى فِخُصْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So you are among those whom Allah elevated. So why you bring yourself down? يعني when somebody says, Shaykh, I am down. لَيْ حَبِيبِي Allah is putting you up. Who brought you down? You. You allowed yourself to come down. So don't. Alright, Ikhwani, this is the summary of tonight's lecture. Never ever surrender to yourself coming down. Nobody in the world will have the power to bring you down unless you want to be down. Unless you put your guard down. مَعَكَ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ Nobody can bring you down if Allah Azza wa Jal is give you victory. Remember this ayah. لَا غَالِبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah is the one who brings people down. Nobody else bring you down except if you want to. So inshallah Rabbil Alameen, I hope tonight was an inspiration. And inshallah Rabbil Alameen, we are going to get those lessons, I'll summarize them, we'll post them inshallah with this video before next Friday. And inshallah next Friday will be the actual achieving of the goal. So I'm going to talk to you about interesting things that happen through this, uh, this uh, PhD, how, uh, how uh, people helped and how people conned me. I was conned, you know? I was conned short cons and long cons. <laughs> in, in this PhD, I lost lots of money that, you know, I could have saved because, you know, people use the situation. And inshallah, how, what did I learn? Some of the amazing statistics about the Muslim community. While I'm doing something and I learned lots of other things, I'll share with you, inshallah, next time and how those goals were achieved that I told you today. Health goals education goals and relationship goals until then i leave you inshallah in the protection of allah jazakumullah khairan walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum